This video goes through the process of taking the trace of the field equations for gravity. The result is to produce a simpler form of these equations for use in a region of space-time, for example, that is devoid of matter and energy. This video is an update to the video titled Schwarzschild Metric Part 2 to correct the results stated at timestamp 1 minute 50 seconds. Right. The Einstein tensor G mu nu is this object here, made up of the Ricci tensor and the Ricci scalar. The Einstein field equation relates the curvature of space-time, this bit here, to the matter and energy present, this bit over here, the energy momentum tensor, and it takes this form here, the Einstein tensor equals this object here. Now by contracting the indices of these rank 2 tensors, we can produce scalars of rank 0, and use these to produce a simpler form of the field equation, or a more usable form. And this process of contraction is called taking the trace of the tensor. Now let's start with the field equation, or equations I should say, when we sum over mu nu for, for the four dimensions of space-time, we'll produce four different equations. Uh, now multiply through by the inverse metric, g alpha mu, here and here, and we'll notice here that the mu here and the mu here sum out, and we're left with, next step down here, the Ricci tensor, but a mixed rank. It now has one index up, one index contravariant, and one index lower covariant. So it's a mixed tensor rank 2, minus a half times the Kronecker delta tensor, times the Ricci scalar, curvature scalar, equals the energy momentum tensor rank 2 mixed, one up, one down. Okay, now, with the Kronecker delta, when we set mu equal to alpha, mu equal to alpha, 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 this gives us the trace here, and this contracts this now to the Ricci scalar as we sum across all of alpha, which alpha takes the values from 0 to 3 for the, uh, for the four dimensions of space-time. And that gives us the Ricci scalar. This is already the Ricci scalar. And the same here with the energy momentum tensor. When we contract that, we get a scalar. Now the Kronecker delta tensor satisfies this object here. Delta alpha alpha is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4 because of the four dimensions of space-time. Now, where the Kronecker delta is not directly involved in contracting indices, it is summed over, as on the previous page, where, so where it's not directly involved in contracting indices, it's summed over, and we get this 4 for the four dimensions, and other dimensions we get whatever that dimension is. In three dimensions, we'd have 3 here, and so on. Now, but where it's involved in contracting indices, we'll get the following result. We won't get this number result here. Now, this here is a proof to show that the Kronecker delta is actually a mixed tensor of rank 2 because it transforms as a tensor and it's invariant under a coordinate change. And going from the unprimed coordinate system to the primed coordinate system, it's invariant under such a transformation and it follows the tensor transformation rule. So we know it's a tensor, in this case, a mixed tensor of rank 2. Okay, when we do that, dxi prime over dxk times dxl over dxj prime, one up, one down, times delta kl. Now, when when we contract the Kronecker delta here, when we contract k and l, l equals k here, you'll see over here, next, this l becomes a k, and so we have k here, k here. They will cancel out to give us this object which is equal to the Kronecker delta, by definition. But what you'll notice here is we're not going to sum this and get 4 in its place, because we're using the Kronecker delta here to contract over these indices. When that happens, this Kronecker delta doesn't appear next to it with kk k here, and then k here, and k here, because we can't have more than two indices that are the same. And where indices are the same, such as the k's here, one, up, one is up, one is down. That's the summation convention. So we're not going to then write the Kronecker delta here with kk. We don't want four of them. We can only have two at most. And one must be up and one must be down. So when we contract k to l, or l to k, setting l equal to k, this l disappears, we get k in its place. Now we can see that they will cancel out, we're left with just this object here, which by definition is a Kronecker delta. So it has the same form in different coordinate systems, in the prime system and the unprimed system. So it's a rank 2 tensor. Now, returning to the Einstein equation, we have substituting in our result previously. We found with the Kronecker delta, we contracted. 
We're taking the trace of that, that uh, the Einstein field equations. It's given us this object here. If we now do the algebra r minus 2r, this object here, or minus r is equal to this, or r is equal to this object here. Now, we will go back from here using this final result down the bottom here on the right, and we will substitute that back into the original field equations. That's our next step. Here we are, let's substitute in. Here's the original field equation, and into here we're going to substitute this result, where the r is here, the Ricci curvature scalar. When we do that, the minus and minus will be allowed to be as plus. We've got this object here. Let's take this over to the right hand side. And we get r mu nu, the Ricci tensor, rank 2, is equal to this whole object here. So it's very nice, very convenient. Got it all, uh, got the Ricci tensor by itself on the left here. And over here we've got it in terms of the energy and momentum in the space time of interest to us. Now, in the particular case, in the absence of matter and energy, as in the region described by the Schwarzschild metric, uh, and that was in the Schwarzschild metric part 2 video. Now we have t mu nu equals 0 equals t, and so we seek the solution to the equation r mu nu is 0. Because in the Schwarzschild space time, that's the region outside the spherical distribution of mass, there is no matter and energy, so all of this is 0. And we're left solving r mu nu equals 0. And that was the point of the material quoted at the timestamp 1 minute 50 seconds in the Schwarzschild metric part 2 video. And that's all of this should have been in there in its place. Alright, finished.